This is a tutorial video for Newly Draw One software. You can get an online manual, the latest online manual for Newly Draw One software at www.mbkpinternational.com backslash Newly Draw One manual.pdf. I've already got the Newly Draw software installed on this computer and I got the USB key plugged in so I can open up the software now. Can go over some settings in the software real quick. On this here, this um, this is basically your your screen size here. I'm gonna just go um, put it at what I like to have it at. You may want something different, but and I'm working with the 3060U laser engraver. That's the JSM 3060U laser engraver. Like the width at 560 and the height at 300. I can put the view at full view, and it gets a table about like that. That's the basically the same size as the table of the laser engraver. That's why I'm putting it at this. Okay, and you can when you exit out this it's gonna forget it's gonna not remember this. So you can actually save this. So go into file and save as and we'll do table one. This is the same way you would save work that you did. Say you had this and you had some work in here that you did. This would be the same way you'd save any work that you did. This is just gonna save the settings for me without any work in it. I'll exit out now. I'll go back into it. As you can see, these settings change back, but I can go here to File, Open, and I got my Table One saved, and it puts the puts my settings back. Again, this would have saved any work if I had any work in here, but I didn't. It's just a table. So you, anytime you want to save any work, that's the same way you do that. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is go into my engrave box here and make sure my model is set to the correct model. Again, I'm working with the JSM 3060U, so I'm going to set it to the 3060U. Make sure you have it on the correct one or it will not work correctly for you, depending on the model you have. Now I'm going to go into the properties here. The general tab, this is basically for speed and power. This is for cut and that's for scan. The max for scan is usually around 500, but I like to keep it 3 to 400 for best performance. The max for cut is around 200, but I usually like to keep it around 50, but really this is going to um, vary greatly depending on what you want to do. Now you can have a higher power and lower speed if you have something tough to cut. If you have something easy to cut, you know you can have a lower power and and faster speed. So depending on what you have to cut, you know you can play with the power and speed here. And um, the power is just I'll set these to 10% for now on both of them. This is the power of the laser for the scan. That's the power of the laser for the cut. Now, if you want it to, you can have this in manual mode. There's a manual and auto switch inside the laser engraver um, engraving area. And if you got it set to manual, it won't go by this. You can just have this at zero if you want, and this at zero. It will go by the current regulator knob, and you can adjust the power from the laser engraver itself on the current regulator knob. If you have it in manual mode, if the switch is switched to manual mode inside the laser engraver. But if you switch it to auto mode, then you control the power in the software, which is right here, the two different power settings for cut and scan. Okay, and that's basically it. you got the scan. You got, I usually keep it at this, these speeds here for general stuff and the power. You can set here to however you how much power you want. Go to advanced. I usually don't mess with this. If you want to learn a little more about it, you can. You know, you look. You can read the manual that I discussed at the beginning of the video. That manual, you do want to uh, make sure you read, and there is a lot of information in there you can get to help familiarize yourself with this software. Go to the device tab. It looks like I already got this. I'm going to load defaults because this is this is what's going to come default for you right here. So I'll do the five back to 560, the same as this here, and 300. And I usually like to change the axis to this one right here for my general use. And you don't want to mess with the board; it's on the right one. This here is the basically if you draw, you can test your laser engraver and make a square in here, and like say 25, 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters, and then cut it out on a piece of paper or something or a piece of cardboard just to where it burns that square and then measure it to make sure it's exactly 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters. If it's not quite that, then you would um, say it turned out to be 51 millimeters by 51 millimeters, and you would adjust that here. You'd go down here, and I think mine was off. I did a 25 millimeter square box, and it was like 
25 and a half millimeters. And I dropped this down to 1008 on both of them. And then, it, and which made the box exactly 25 millimeters. So you can adjust yours. Yours may, it comes default to 1016. But um, that's for adjusting if it's not engraving something at the precise size it should be. Or cutting something the precise size. Okay, that's basically it on that. Okay, we can exit out of that. Now this here is the step move, just to move your laser head around. It will move at that many millimeters, what you have it set to there. This is your um, where the laser head starts. I got it at 10 and 100. And that's what happens when you hit 2XY. It will go to this area on the engraving. Say this is the engraving table of the laser engraver. The head will come down and it will move about right there. You can change that if you want, but that's what I like to have it at. Okay. We'll go into the this button right here. This here is just to test fire the laser. This is the power setting here. Again, you adjust the power here if you have it in auto mode. If you have it in manual, you'd adjust the power on the laser engraver. This is the milliseconds here. 100 milliseconds is like a tenth of a second. So if you click this, it will shoot a laser beam just straight down for um, a tenth of a second at 10% power. So just basically if you want to test fire the laser or align the mirrors or something like that. You can unlock the... Um, the laser head apparatus by clicking this and then you can move it by hand if you don't otherwise you don't want to try to move it by hand but you can unlock it while the laser engraver is on using this if the laser engraver is off you can always move it by hand this also you want to set to 10 and 100 if you want to do it like the, the settings I have and this you can move move from this from this as well and that's this, how much it moves each time you click it and that's pretty much it on that. Let's go to an example here. Say I'm going to engrave a, a box, a circle, and this. Okay. You can adjust the stuff on that thing by clicking this here, the sides of it. You can make it a star by that. You can go deeper in the, into the star like that. On the when you want to grab an object, so then you can hit the pointer here, and then click on it. And again, you can drag this one here to adjust it. May round off the corners a little bit, like so. You can change that to these different things on it, like that. You can make it across. Same thing with the circle. You can mess with it, make it like a half circle or something by by dragging this here. Okay. And let's say I want to cut these out, and I want to cut them in a certain order. One thing you want to make sure you want to go to the option menu. In initial cut lines order and you want to take this off initial sort and click OK. Now you can do a cut cut order if you want it to and you just basically click this and right now it's just going to cut it in the order that you created them but if you want it to you can once you click that you can click the order you want say I want to do this first I'd click on that it turn it to a one say I want to do that second you do that and then you always finish it out and click that for the third and then when you're done with it, for some reason, I'm not sure why it does this, but you got to click outside of it to exit it, basically save it, and then you click it again. And it shows the order. And then you come up here, and you select all. It will select every one you want to cut out. And then you go to the engrave, click engrave, click start engrave. You usually want to hit um, X, Y, reset. It's a good idea. You don't always have to, but if you ever had any problems you want to do that and one other thing when you're clicking these buttons you want to make sure you don't um, click another one until one's completed the job it could freeze the software so let it do what it's going to do when you click the button then hit 2xy always hit 2xy before you start if you don't the laser head could be out of the engraving area and when you hit start it could start engraving out of the la laser out of the engraving area so then you hit start and it would start engraving those in, in that order it would cut this one out first Cut that one out second, and then that one third. Okay. And that's basically on that. Come here, I'll, select, I'll cut all these. And I'll import a picture. You can also, from those square circle, you can do it from a pin if you want it to. Let's go to a text box. You can do text box here, or you can do it from here. Box text. I'll do it from here. Hold control, enter if you want to space down. 
and then you just click where you want to put it. You can drag it to larger or you can use this number thing to, to make it different sizes. And you can drag it around anywhere you want or move it with the arrows on your keyboard. Again, same thing, you have to have it selected. Once you got it selected, you can click engrave. Start engrave. Uh, if you have any problems, always hit um, XY reset, but if you don't, you usually can just hit 2XY. Sometimes it's already at there. Then just hit start and it will start cutting that out. Start cutting it out. If you want it to, you could scan it, put it in the scan mode, which is that. And then it would scan it and basically engrave it. Otherwise, cut mode would cut it out. Okay, let's just cut that off. And the last thing I'll do is import a picture. I've already saved this to my desktop as JPEG form in black and white. It's pretty simple. Just like basically basic software, you can open it up. You can make it a little more enhanced, four lines a little more clearer. You can flip it if you want it to, mirror image it. Flip it around anywhere you want. I'll do mirror image. Same thing, you have to have it selected, and then you hit the engrave. And you hit um, start engrave. And then you'd hit start. Or I'm sorry, first you'd hit um, 2XY. Sometimes again, you may, if you don't go to the right XY position, you could have moved the, if you like move this by hand or something like that, it could, it wouldn't know where the XY position was at anymore, so you'd hit reset XY. And then hit 2XY. And then hit start. But again, this is just something to reset it if you need to reset it. Typically, you don't have to. You just have to hit 2XY. You want to make sure you hit that before you hit start. Again, you just want to play with this software. It's fairly simple software. You just got to um, mess around with it, see what it has to offer, and just play around with it like any software you would, you would get. Change the view here to larger or smaller. And that's about it for now. This video is property of MBKP International, LLC.